Hello, my friends of Community Tri-Series Television. Welcome to this special edition with our candidates. It's important to be informed. It's important to know what is happening in our community. And today we had a special guest, and she's running for the first time to be a school trustee candidate. And welcome, Nancy Justin. Oh, welcome. Thank you very much, Judith. I will really uh, would like to ask you, why are you interested in be serving our community in that way? It's a long story. May I tell it? Yes, please. Uh, everybody wanted to know you. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, let me weave this as a tale, if I may. Um, and it starts in Port Moody when I was just in my mid-20s, um, very broke, had no money for the rent. And I got a job working in Flavel Cedar down at the west end of the inlet in Port Moody. And that was when I first fell in love with Port Moody. I, um, I worked in the mill, and I worked on the graveyard shift. And sometimes just when the sun was coming up on the inlet, and my machine would be broken down or something, so I had a chance to look out. I'd look out over Port Moody, and I'd think, this is the most beautiful spot in the world. And as I worked in the mill, um, a couple of things happened. I learned to speak up for myself. I got on a few committees. I learned to speak up for other people, which is ultimately, you know, fast forward today, what I would be doing as a trustee. I would be speaking up for parents in the school community, but I learned to speak out for things that were wrong. Yeah, I never really... <laughs> it was hard to shut up, if the truth be known. Um, but also, at some point, it occurred to me that, you know, I was aging and there wasn't a lot of transferable skills to put on a resume. All you could say was, I know how to put boards through a saw. That wasn't going to get me anywhere. So I left and I went to BCIT and I took occupational health and safety, um, which really had fascinated me because I was able to advocate for people and changes in the mill. So I knew that I could do that part and that I was interested. And the BCIT, health and safety piece, led me to working for two separate school districts for pretty 30 years. So during that time of working for two school districts as a health and safety manager, I really got to know how the school districts work from the inside that it, there's policies, there's procedures, there's the Schools Act, there's the Labor Code, there's collective agreements, there's two separate, um, yeah, there's two separate collective agreements. There are a million different complicated pieces that go in to a school board functioning properly and, and the policy setting. And I, so I became actually quite fascinated with that. It's so interesting that when you mentioned that last part, all the experience and knowledge that you've been having on the field for 30 years. So I think that is really important. And I completely agree with you. I fall in love also with Port Moody. And that's the reason I choose to live in, close by in Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's so good that you wanted to use your skills to help our community in that 30 years experience. It is. I feel it's a good fit, Judith. I really do. I'm not just trying to sort of <laughs> force myself on the community. I really feel that that 30 years of experience is a good fit for the role. And then I got married and I had a son and he went through the public school system. And as a mom, you see, you know, what works well. You see that the teachers are good and, you know, their kids are happy and they're learning things and they're passing their grades. But you also do see the things that aren't as good for kids. And so, you know, you get, I've got that mum experience as well, not just the bureaucrat. That got to, to my second question is, what will be the platform that you wanted to present when you are in this role? As a well, I don't just have one platform. Um, I don't, you know, I don't just have one thing I want to get elected on. And you know, just let me, I will go back to that. I forgot the 
to um, acknowledge that we're having this interview yes, yes. on the unceded territories of the Coquitlam people, Coquitlam Nation. So I um, apologize for forgetting. And I am grateful that we are um, speaking to each other yes. on the unceded territories. Back to my platform. My biggest concern, Judith, is that a really broad range of educational opportunities continues to be available for kids. Because every child is different. Every child has their own unique strengths, fears, hopes, dreams. And what happens when budgets get tight in school districts, and I've seen them shrink and expand and shrink and expand over the years, is that the money for some of the less the traditional programs evaporates so that, you know, a music, I was talking to a parent the other day and he was saying that his child's school's enrollment is dropped so there, there's not as many music lessons, for example. So to me, for every child to have a chance every day, you need your strong academics, but you also need your arts, you need drama, you need music, you need you know, the, what are they called, visual arts. You need really good sports programs. You need really good tech ed programs. Because, you know, for some little guys, the only reason they might go to school, even be able to feel like getting up and going to school that day, is because they get to play soccer. Or it's a band day. And that's not to take anything away from the academics, because obviously they're very important. But in order for all of the kids to thrive and have as many opportunities to succeed as possible, my biggest concern is that we are able to maintain all of these different programs. programs. Okay, so you will be focused to promote pr academic programs, but also music, art, and sports. Music, art, sports, technology education. Technology is so um, Which is very popular these yes. days, but some decades it isn't. Um, as many opportunities, children thrive and become happy, uh, productive adults when they have a lot of opportunities to succeed. So that is my main part of my platform. It's not my only issue, but that kids have the broadest spectrum of educational choices possible. You were mentioned that you recognize some points that can be uh, manageable in the system that can be improved. What are the points that you, that you recognize? Well, one of them is scheduling. So the way schools, particularly secondary schools, are scheduled now, Judith, is that um, basically there's so many kids and so many teachers and so much classroom space, and they're trying to get everybody through all their courses. Um, but there's a lot of research, for example, that, that um, supports, well, in fact, proves that adolescents can't learn math as well in the morning as in the afternoon, um, and it's got something to, I'm not, I'm not a teacher specialist, but it's got something to do with how children both physically and mentally are developing at that stage of their lives. So if I was elected, I would want staff to look at if, if there are different scheduling models that could accommodate that sort of thing. Yes, and especially because our, our children and uh, children and they are getting into adulthood, they need to be able to understand how their body and how they can perform better and how they can help their, themselves to perform better in, in, in different mm -hmm. areas, yeah. you know? Yeah. And when they get ready to go to university, how, how they can, that schedule help, help them. Yeah, it's a good point. Anything else that you like to improve or recognize? There's so many comments, it's hard to <laughs> I think that I need their vote because I can serve their children, I guess is the best way to put it. I will be available to go to schools, go to grad ceremonies, go to 
look at issues, go to meetings, go to staff meetings, go to kindergarten teas, go to um, wherever I can add some influence or get some input. Um, one of the comments I've had, and I'm not really going to denigrate the other candidates, but I have had the odd comment that um, people are not finding it easy to get in touch with trustees or approach them, and I don't know what that's about. But um, I, I'd love to listen to people. I love to hear what their concerns are about this system, and I'm good at um, making their concerns heard to uh, other trustees, because obviously you can't do this yourself. You're on a board, right? So you've got to be able to persuade other school trustees. Um, but I think what I would say for them is that I'm there for you and I can take what you bring. If you tell me something's a problem, I will actively work to make it not a problem. Will I always succeed? Of course not. But I won't leave your issues beside the side, by the side of the road and I will bring them up with whoever in the school district has the potential to be able to fix them. Yes, thank you, Nancy Johnston, for the visit today. Uh, so interesting to hear that you are somebody that you are open, ready to help, ready to listen, and build our community and be able that bridge that can unite all the pieces, you know, between government, parents, mm -hmm. school, teachers, and create something better for our children. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. And uh, all the best in your campaign. Thank you, Judith. And anything else that you want us to know about you that 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 make you that is why you deserve our vote um well there are a couple of things um and i hadn't actually initially had them as part of my platform um where are they they've vanished primarily i do know what they are primarily because i thought they were already done and dusted and being dealt with um i have it has come up during my campaign during the campaign that um, there, people are still concerned with that trustees are behind the SOGI 123 curriculum, which is, can I get this right, sexual orientation and gender identity. And there is a provincial curriculum um, that teachers very sensitively, in fact, do deliver um, across grade levels. Um, so that people, so that all kids are comfortable and all kids understand that they're to be comfortable with everyone else in their class. And I thought, frankly, that that was an accepted thing, but apparently it's not um, everywhere. So I would like parents to know that I am firmly in favor of the implementation of SOGI 123 curriculum as, um, as delivered and mandated by the provincial government. Interesting. Good point. Yeah, well, it's not one I'd realized was still perking, but I was wrong. Um, the other that's come up, and I've got quite a few e emails um, from concerned people, is to do with t um, them wanting a sanctuary schools policy. Mm -hmm. And sanctuary schools are when um, a sanctuary schools policy is put in place to ensure that children who are in the country whose parents may not have a perfectly uh, smooth uh, immigration status. There may be that they, they cannot, they may not supposed to be, be here. They may not um, have the paperwork to prove they're allowed to be in Canada. Um, and as far as the school system should be concerned, that's nothing to do with us. You have a child, they need an education. Um, so what I would like to Make sure, and I do believe that the Coquitlam, Coquitlam School Board does um, handle this already, but having a sanctuary schools policy really does enshrine um, the sanctuary schools commitment to those kids and their families, um, that they won't turn them over to customs, um, you know, that they won't gratuitously share information about those children's immigration status and that everybody in the schools and the systems understands how to handle those situations so that those kids are in school and learning and thriving as children should be. 
So it's, it's really important like, yeah. like to bring that to the children. And, and unfortunately, in these uh, changes that is happening around the world with immigration from Syria and Ukraine, all those circumstances, I think that the children needs to be stable. So that is, that is something that I agree with you, even I am not in Port Moody, I am in Corquicla. But thank you, Nancy Justin, for your visit. And uh, have a great, great, great campaign. Oh, thank and you. And to all of you, my friends out there, now you know more about future trustees in Port Moody. So if you are in that city, be sure that you go and vote. Thank you for being with us in Tri-Cities Community Television. And thank you to the team that make this possible. And they are amazing behind cameras. Bye-bye. <laughs>